South China Morning Post, 11th of March 2024, in the past decade, why have thousands of Chinese laborers abandoned Africa? As a result of the hostile market conditions in Africa and the absence of infrastructure projects funded by China, Chinese laborers are returning to their home countries. When former Chinese President Jiang Zemin encouraged enterprises to go out approximately two decades ago, tens of thousands of mainland firms migrated to Africa in search of new raw materials and markets. In 2015, the number of Chinese migrant laborers in Africa was estimated to be around 263,000, having accompanied thousands of them. However, the number of Chinese laborers in Africa has decreased significantly since that time due to the lack of funding for infrastructure projects. This predicament the coronavirus pandemic has exacerbated. According to a February publication of an International Monetary Fund IMF, working paper on China's economic engagements with Africa, the official number of Chinese laborers in Africa decreased by 64% from 2015 to approximately 93,000 by the end of 2021. Algeria and Angola experienced the departure of nearly 90% of the formerly registered Chinese labor force. However, the actual number may be marginally more significant due to the exclusion of informal migrants, including private traders, investors, and merchants, from those figures. The decrease in personnel is intrinsically linked to the yearly aggregate revenues generated by Chinese corporations engaged in construction endeavors in Africa. The IMF paper states, there is a positive correlation between the number of Chinese workers and the gross revenues of Chinese companies in Africa, particularly before the pandemic. The report indicated that Chinese firms engaged in engineering and construction endeavors in Africa experienced their highest ever revenue in 2015, after which it commenced a progressive decline. The revenue above figure decreased by 3% from the previous year to 37 billion US dollars in 2021. Based on data compiled by the China Africa Research Initiative CARI, at the School of Advanced International Studies SAIS, of Johns Hopkins University, the number of Chinese laborers in Africa continued to decline in 2022, reaching a minimum of 88,371. The decline was substantially attributable to the pandemic. Amid travel disruptions caused by COVID-19, the workforce decreased by approximately 50% in 2020. Constraints persisted in the year 2022 as a result of COVID. China did not open its borders until January 2023 said Deborah Broidegum, director of Kerry. According to Kerry data, 72,526 of the 93,526 Chinese workers in Africa were engaged in project contracting in 2021, while 21,000 were employed in services, such as hotel staff, manufacturing laborers, and chefs. Kerry estimates that in 2022, China employed 62,686 individuals in the project contracting sector and 25,685 in the services sector. In 2022, Angola, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Algeria, Egypt, and Nigeria comprised Africa's top five countries with Chinese laborers. These countries accounted for 42% of the total Chinese workforce on the continent. According to Kerry data, Angola employed 50,526 Chinese nationals in 2013. By 2022, that number had decreased to 6,784. Likewise, Algeria experienced a significant decline in Chinese laborers from 91,596 in 2015 to 7,462 by 2022. According to Dominic Kapinski, a senior advisor at the Polish Economic Institute and associate professor in the Institute of Economics at the University of Wrocław, the decline in Angola was directly attributable to two factors, the economic crisis that followed the oil price plunge after 2014 and the cessation of Chinese loans. According to Kapinski, this resulted in the closure of most Chinese state-owned enterprises SOEs, and their employees, as well as numerous Chinese establishments, including restaurants, that cater to Chinese migrants. He stated that Angola was notable because the government outsourced reconstruction to Chinese firms after the country's civil conflict in 2002. A substantial influx of Chinese SOEs, subcontractors, and approximately 300,000 migrants ensued as a consequence. Estimations vary today 
but based on interviews conducted in 2022, I estimate that there are approximately 20,000 Chinese migrants residing in Angola, he explained. Kapinski predicted that the number would eventually increase, but it would do so gradually and moderately. Infrastructure initiatives and large loans worth billions of dollars were also extremely unlikely to return. According to him, Chinese migration in Angola took on characteristics more akin to Portuguese migration after 1910. This is evident in the expansion of small family businesses, merchants, and farmers into treacherous regions beyond major urban centers, where others fear to tread. In contrast, Egypt has experienced modest increases in Chinese laborers in recent years. Chinese firms have initiated massive construction projects at both the Suez Canal and the new administrative capital in Cairo, where the Chinese workforce is projected to increase from approximately 2,000 in 2015 to 7,358 in 2022. The situation is comparable in the DRC. Chinese laborers and investors have maintained a keen interest in the performance of the nation's mining sector, which provides the majority of cobalt to the country. The number of Chinese workers in the DRC increased from 5,155 in 2014 to 8,705 in 2021. These figures exclude the substantial number of undocumented Chinese migrants who operate small enterprises, including those engaged in artisanal mining. Broidegum of Kerry stated that the availability of project financings, such as bank loans in Angola and the Republic of Congo or commodity export revenues in Algeria, was highly correlated with the prevalence of Chinese labor. She stated that after the apex of 2013, Chinese project lending leveled off and then declined, as Africa appeared riskier due to the steep decline in commodity prices, such as oil. As a result, fewer workers were dispatched, and fewer new projects were initiated, Broidegam explained. She also attributed a portion of the decline to the fact that Chinese firms employed more local laborers as their presence in a country increased. The sharp decline in 2020 and 2021 is, of course, a reflection of the pandemic's effects, she added. Broidegam predicted that a future recovery would occur, albeit one that would be less substantial than the previous levels. A return to the high numbers observed over the past decade is improbable, she stated.